Good morning, Noah. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Uh, first time you've had to recover from a full football game in, in a while. How are you feeling physically coming off of that Wisconsin game? And what did it do for you moving forward to, to have that game under your belt? Okay, so, I mean, I, I'm just feeling blessed right now. I'm feeling um, really relieved just coming out that first game healthy. And with that being my first start, it was just you know, was a lot of energy, just a lot of emotions coming out of that game. And it was just a blessing to be part of that type of win. It was just a, a great atmosphere for us to be a part of and just, you know, for our defense to have our backs from that many possessions. And then we still come out on top. Man, it was just a great overall team win. Audrey Snyder. Hey, Noah, thanks for your time. Yes, ma'am. Um, I wanted to ask you, how how do you think you're a different or better running back now than the guy we saw for those three or four snaps in Bloomington last October? Yes, ma'am. I, I just feel like I'm more prepared, and I just feel like I'm more mature with an, and a better student of the game. Um, you know, this offseason, I really had to focus on my body, so I just really started just really honing in on even more just the foods I put in my body, how I train, how I stretch. It's how I prepare. You know, I just wanted to prepare like a pro, so I'd start watching a lot more NFL guys and just start doing more homework on them, seeing how they prepare for the game, seeing how they, you know, just study film, seeing how they, you know, just run and just different things I could pick up on to add to my game. And so I just feel like I'm just a whole lot more mature and just a better student of the game right now, which has helped the game slow down for me and just helped me better prepare better as a student of the game. Rich Garcella. Good morning, Noah. What was the worst part for you last year? What was the low point? And when you dreamed about this year, what did you dream about? Yes, I mean, um, last year, getting hurt the third play of the game is, is you know, it's never in anyone's uh, head. You know, when it had happened, you know, it was just a, a very, uh, it was a humbling time for myself because that was just the first time of me having to really be sidelined for that period of time. And it just, I really had to learn how to embrace the process every day, you know, with going through the rehab and going through, you know, a lot of roller coasters within that injury, you know, some weeks being good, some weeks being bad. You know, it was uncomfortable for a time period, you know, um, just having to get used to that new normal, you know, uh, coming out of that surgery and just having to adjust mentally and physically, you know, it was very challenging, but, you know, just my support system, and, you know, just my faith, you know, just really helped me persevere through all of that. And like I said, you know, I'm just thanking God to be where I'm at right now, just ecstatic, you know, going into this next week. Justin Morgenstern. Noah, you talked about it a little bit on Saturday after the game, but, you know, what did Saturday mean to you and your family, you know, after especially what's going on in your uh, hometown over the last week? It's a, it was just, it, it was a surreal moment um, with all that's going on in the world right now. And for my aunt and cousin, you know, my dad, you know, make it up to the game, you know, through all the midst of the hurricanes and all that. It was just a blessing to see them after the game and be able to celebrate, you know, that brief moment I had with them. Um, like I said, it was just exciting, you know, for me to be able to go out there and play the game that I love again, and for my mom, dad, and you know, the rest of my family to be in the stands. It was just, a, it was, a, it was an unreal moment, you know, something I always remember and never forget. Tony Collins. No, you mentioned maturity and, and, and patience earlier. Uh, did that kind of show up for you on on Saturday after the first half where nothing much was really going on and then you were able to break that big run that kind of opened up things for you guys? Was, was that kind of an example of, of, of the maturity and the patience uh, that you were talking about? Yes, yeah, sir, most definitely. I think, you know, the younger me would have kind of been more frustrated not having as many carries in the first half and letting that get in my head. And, you know, that would affect, you know, me handling my business and other players of the field. So I think just... Me understanding the aspect of the game, just being ready whenever your number is called, you know, just doing anything that the coaches are asking of you. I think that just helped me just have that patience and just trust what the coaches will tell us in the second half. We're going to get together. We're going to get the chemistry going, you know, just for, um, you know, for us to make that push in the fourth quarter against a team like Wisconsin on the road. That was just, you know, that was just big time on a, on a whole group of offense. So, like I said, it was just, it was a great overall team win. Just real excited to get back out there. And, um, just overall, just can't wait for next week. Nate Power. Hey Noah, how are you? Good, how you doing? Good. Hey, you know when you got when you got hurt last year, uh, did you hear the the conversation and opinions of people saying that maybe you were injury prone? And was that was that something that you had to shake? Like, did you have to ignore that? How did you how did you kind of handle uh, that perception of you? It's funny you said that. I heard I heard that a lot. Like. Uh... 
just a lot of different people, just, you know, comments and things I hear. You know, all you can do is really do is just keep your head down and keep working because, you know, when people say you can either let that break you or just build you. So honestly, for me, like I said, it, that's what made me even more want to focus on how, how I prepare, how I eat, how I train, just just due to the fact that, like, yeah, I've had, you know, some injuries. But this is part of the game, though. You know, I wouldn't change it for anything because it's helped me, you know, become the person I am right now. So, like I said, um, it has it helped me prepare, become a better student in the game, helped me just train better, helped me just learn different parts of my body that I do need to work on. It just helped me just learn different things that, you know, that helped me make a better player. So, yeah, I heard a lot of those things, but at the end of the day, you know, I didn't let that, you know, um, break my confidence or break how I prepare a train. So it, it has made me a better person to play. New Bias Wilborn? Uh, I remember last year you couldn't go home because of COVID. When's the last time you've been back home and what has it been like being so far away from your people then getting to see them over the weekend? Yeah, so, you know, I, last time I was home was uh, probably the end of June. I had a few days off and was able to go see my family. And like I said, just, you know, anytime, anytime that uh, I can, I try to go back home because it's very rare, you know, within our football schedule. So just being able to celebrate with them and, you know, like I said, through the midst of the hurricane, through the midst of all the adversity they had to go through just to get to Wisconsin, you know, that's just, that just shows you how much they love me. And that just shows um, the type of support system that I have with all the love and just care. And just being able to celebrate with them after the game, it was just, it was just a great feeling. And I was, I'm just glad and blessed they were able to be there and support me. Joe Giuliano. Uh, good morning, Noah. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, Sean Clifford. Uh, how do you think uh, he performed uh, Saturday? What was he like in the huddle and uh, especially on the um, on the sidelines uh, with you guys uh, when you were uh, when the defense was on the field? Yeah, man. Sean's just a leader, man. He just he just kept the offense calm and collected, you know, through the first half. You know, when we weren't really getting anything going. <clears throat> so and then just at halftime as well, just keeping our confidence up. He just kept the whole offense whole as one. He didn't start letting anybody point fingers. He was just kept telling the offense as well. Just you know, it's, it's we're gonna make we're gonna start making plays. We can get the things going. We can get the offense going. You know, you know, as y'all seen, we start getting some things going in the second half. So he's just a great leader, man. He's been a great leader for us all summer. You know, through summer workouts, through camp. You know, and I, you know, I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't rather have any other quarterback than him in that backfield. So he's just a great leader that we have right now. You know, I'm just looking forward for him to keep leading us this season. Frank Boudin. Hey, Noah. Um, we still really haven't seen you with a full workload in a game since your freshman season. So with all that time healing, recovering, rehabbing, can you give me an example of how your body, I mean, how are you different now than as a freshman? Like, how are you stronger, faster, whatever? Yeah, it, it really, like I said, it really just came from how I train, how I eat. The main thing was how I eat, how I sleep. Um, and honestly, just how like how I keep my mental prepared, and I just started doing a lot of different things, focusing on the small things, more stretching, you know, just more extra things for my body that you know that helped me take my game to the next level. Started studying more films so the game could slow down even more for me, which was like a big thing I wanted to work on, you know, coming into this next season. I just want the game to slow down for me even more, and just really just prepare like a pro. So, like I said, I just started doing a whole lot more homework and studying film on NFL guys just to see how they, you know, handle their business on the next level so it can help me prepare even better. And I just think, like, you know, my mental, you know, I just feel like my um, my physical trait right now is just, I've been working on a lot of, um, you know, like single leg, single leg work for my body, for my calves, for my ankles, just focusing on every aspect of my body, uh, you know, that to help me just make the best player that I can be. Elton Hayes. Hey, Noah, thanks for the time this morning. Um, you had that uh, pretty def game-defining 16-yard reception there in the fourth quarter that kind of set up um, the score. Coach Franklin talked about your ability to uh, slip arm tackles and stuff like that post-game. Um, what are some things you did last year? I know you were you know couldn't practice or anything like that, but what are some things you did to kind of help yourself as a pass catcher and get better in that role? Yeah, the biggest thing with that was, you know, I stayed on the jug machines, you know, every day throughout camp, every day throughout this offseason. Just staying on Jug's machine, just working on my hands at all times, you know, working on my, my strength, my grip, and everything is like that. So I think, like I said, just came from my preparation, just my training. Like I said, I wanted to focus on every aspect of my game this offseason just to help me make the help me make myself the best player I can be coming into this year. So I think all those things is, you know, to start and help me, 
you know, and I'm starting to see the benefits of it. Kyle Andrews. Hey, Noah, how's it going? Um, so, uh, you know, the first thing I wanted to ask you was just when it came to pass protection, I know you, you made a bunch of good uh, pickups. Um, you know, how have you worked on your pass protection um, during during the off season and, and during camp as well? Yeah, I think pass for it's one of, it's one of the hardest things to do. Honestly, you know, just for any any back, you know, you're blocking, you know, big physical guys, sometimes physical freaks. So it's just, it just takes a lot of um it's it's a one two. Of course, Sider always says it's a one two. It's just a matter of how much will you want to have when you do it. So I, it really just came from like I said, the studying film on NFL guys, you know, my similar body frame and weight, seeing how they pass protect, and then really just working on it every day in practice. It was something that you know myself need to work on, you know, and rest of the backs as well. So. That's the something Coach Sider had us doing in practice a lot, just working on that, Again, going against the linebackers every day in camp, just doing a lot of drills is going to help us, you know, just be a better pass protector on the field. So I think, you know, like I said, all that training and preparation that we've been doing, you know, up to that point, you know, is what helping us on the field. Tyler Donahue. You know, I, I, you've got four other guys in that running back room, at least four other guys who think that they should be out there playing every Saturday, I'm sure. Um, not many touches for the other guys on Saturday. We don't know what that's going to look like, but how have you seen this group stay sharp, stay focused, even though, you know, week by week, guys are going to be left on the sideline? Yes, I think it, it really just comes from Coach Sider's leadership, just, you know, just telling them, like, it's, it's got to stay as one because, like I said, last year I got hurt third play of the game, and then Keeper had to be ready to go. So, honestly, you know, it's a game of inches. It's, football's a physical game. So, really just standing in the guy's ear saying, you know, at any given point, you could be a starter. At any given point, you could be playing. And I think, you know, Coach Franklin is always just, just telling us, prepare like you're the starter, because honestly, if you're not prepared for that moment, then you're going to regret it. So uh, I just think that comes from Coach Sider's leadership, which is telling us always be ready to go, always be ready um, to play, because you have to prepare like you're the starter. Because, like I said, my situation last year, you honestly do have to be ready at any point of the game, be ready to go in, you know, and handle your business on the field. So. Honestly, Coach Sider is keeping us as one, keeping us as a brotherhood. I think that's what helps us, you know, uh, stay, you know, with a positive attitude. Audrey Smiller? No, you mentioned a few times on here about uh, watching NFL running backs and trying to study them. Um, who do you watch? And I know you've worked with, with Josh Hicks, and obviously Josh has worked with Ezekiel Elliott. Have you guys, have you and Zeke ever connected? Or um, who, who are you watching? Uh, I, I wouldn't mind working that with Z. That'd be that'd be, that'd be that'd be what's up. I was supposed to one time this summer, but I had a class conflict um, when I was just online with Zoom. So it was I was supposed to work on with him one time, but uh, honestly, Coach Hicks is just, uh, Coach Hicks is just always telling me you know different tips Z could tell him that help him with this game. You know, I try to watch guys like Ezekiel Elliott as well, Nick Chubb, um, Alvin Kamara, and then I just try to watch like guys Christian McCaffrey as well. Just guys that are at the top of their craft right now, at the top of the league, just, you know, balling. And honestly, just seeing how they run the ball, it's really just watching, you know, different YouTube clips on them, just seeing how they prepare and just their mental, what their mental's like. So all those different things, you know, just really just benefited me and helped me, you know, get back to where I'm at right now. So you didn't skip the Zoom to go work with Zeke? I had a, I had a, class, I had a test that day, so I couldn't. I, I tried to, but I had, I had, a, had a test that day. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Thanks, Noah. No problem. Rich Garcella? No, the offensive line struggled at times on Saturday, and I was just wondering, what do you do? Um, what do you say to them? And also, where do you see them going the rest of the season? Thanks. I, I feel like we have one of the best old lines in the country. You know, you know, through those struggles in the first half, you know, the whole running back group kept going over to those guys and just loving on them, saying, we're going to get it together, we're going to get it going. I feel like as a whole offense, we were thinking too fast, so, you know, it's first few drives, and you know, once we settled down, then we got, you know, we were starting to get things going. So, you know, I feel like all lines, they're going to get together this week. You know, y'all going to be able to see, you know, all the work they put in. They prepare like no other O line I've ever seen. Like, those guys are always in every weekend doing extra film work, doing extra work. Like, coach Tryron is a great coach, you know, one of the best O line coaches I've been around. So, I mean, I they're going to get together this week. You know, they, those guys work hard, you know, one of the hardest working groups on the team. So, like I said, you know, y'all going to be able to see the, all the work they put in, you know, and all the hours they put in, too. Time for two more. Donnie Collins. Kevon, or, uh, it, it, no, it looked like Kevon uh, tried to, you know, make some big plays where, where there was, you know, maybe a yard or two to gain, and then he tried to bounce it out and, and, and lost a couple of yards a couple of times on 
on Saturday. Um, how how, how difficult a, a balance is that for a young back to strike where you where, where you where you want to you want to gain what's there, but you, you also want to make a big play. Is that a, is that a lesson you got to learn as a young back? I, I think it is. I think any, any young back coming into college, like even for myself, you try to like rush things sometimes because, you know, not high school. You got to adjust the, the speed of the game. You got to adjust to how fast and physical guys are playing. So you, uh, you just have to get a better feel for the game. And like keep on, y'all see strong, balanced, fast dudes. So yeah, he like he has all the potential in the words, you know, um, just the nature of the play. But like I said, like I think for any young back, you know, you're trying to just learn the, the feel of the, get a better feel for the game and just, you know, just get, the, get that better pacing. So I just feel like, like I said, Keith going to be a baller, man. You know, y'all going to see all the work he's put in as well. You know, he's, you know, his, his body frame and size is, you know, incredible. So, yeah, he's a dog as well. Last question, Tobias Wilborn. Man, um, what class was that, and how did you do on a test? And what does that say about you as a student being <laughs> willing to be that? Dedicated to your studies. Man, that was my Spanish two class, man. I finished. I, uh, it, was, it was tough. I think I finished like a 75, 77. But I, you know, I passed it. But it's one of my Spanish two classes that you know I just had to handle business on that. But um, you know, working with Coach Hicks, you know, just that day, just being able to just to hear that knowledge and wisdom, you know, uh, Zeke that to get a Hicks, and then I be able to receive as well. It's just it's a blessing of all.